Hi, my name is Tony Mo. I'm a uh, Vermillion Parish school bus driver. I am a Louisiana Department of Education certified to teach um, the skills test or CDLs. Uh, today we are going to do part one of your skills test, which will be the uh, pre trip inspection. Okay, first of all, we're going to look underneath the bus and we are going to see that there are no puddles of fluid any leaks of any sort, there's no debris, that the bus is on flat level ground, and the bus is not leaning to the left or the right. We will then go to the side of the bus and notice that the side of the bus is in good condition. There's no damage, no graffiti of any sort. Okay, we're gonna come back around to the front of the bus. And we're going to start at the top of the bus. You have your three clearance lights in the middle. They're securely attached. They're good in color, not cracked or broken. We have our school bus decal in the middle. It's attached, readable, not cracked or broken. We have our two outside student lights. Good in color, not cracked or broken. And our amber lights on the inside. Good in color, not cracked or broken. Our windshield is clean, not cracked or broken, and it's clean to, and good to see through. We'll come down to the lens covers, headlight lens covers. Encased in this lens cover is your headlights and your signal lights slash hazards. And also on the side, you have your hazard lights. Good in color, not faded or broken and in good condition. Come down to the cross arm. As you can see, the cross arm is securely attached and in workable condition. Our student decal on the bus and our bumper, securely attached with nuts and bolts. Now I'll come around to this side, passenger side, and we are going to check our mirrors. Our mirrors are securely attached. You have your flat mirror and your convex mirror, along with your crossover mirror, securely attached, not cracked or broken, and clean to see through. We'll come around on this side, we'll unlatch the bus first, run the hood on this side, and come around on this side. Again, our crossover mirror on the driver's side, gutting attached, not cracked or broken, and clean to see through. And on this side as well, flat mirror and convex mirror, securely attached, not broken, clean to see through. Okay, now we're gonna go into the hood. Okay, we're gonna begin at the top of the bus over here. We'll get inside here and we're going to show you that the windshield wipers are securely attached. The blades also, the blades are not worn or torn and not excessively worn. We have our two top radiator hoses securely attached with clamps on both sides. I see no leaks. The ho hoses are in good condition, no tears and no bubbles. Go to the oil filler cap. To, uh, this would be where you would add oil to the engine. You would unscrew this and you would add your oil here. We'll go to the transmission. To check your transmission oil, your bus has to be in neutral, which your part gauge engaged, which your engine running, and your engine should be hot. You would pull this out and on here, your dipstick would need to be between add and full. Close that back. And again, for your oil, dipstick oil, you would pull this out. Again, it needs to be between add and full. And to add oil, you would then add it over here to the top of the engine. Okay, moving on down here, we have our air conditioner compressor. It is securely mounted to the engine block. It is belt driven 
and the belt is in good condition. I see no and I see no tears or frays. You should not have no more than three quarter inch play in your belt. Okay, following my hoses down, we're gonna go to the back right here, and we're going to look at the air compressor, which is in the back, which is securely mounted. I hear or see no leaks, and it is gear driven. Right here in the front of the air compressor is your power steering pump. Uh, it also is gear driven and I see no leaks. Attached to the power steering hose, right here on the back side of the power steering pump, which leads all the way to the power steering risk reservoir, right here. I see no leaks and no bubbles on the hose. The power steering res reservoir is securely attached with nuts and bolts. It has adequate fluid. And if to add fluid, I would open this right here and add my fluid into here, which also shows it has adequate fluid. Following this hose here down to the gearbox, it also is securely attached. See no, and I see no uh, bubbles, no tears, and no leaks. It is attached to the gearbox. The gearbox is securely mounted. It's not bent or broken, and I see no leaks. Right here is the pitman arm. It is securely attached with the castle nut and carter key, and also attached to the pitman arm is the steering linkage. The bushings are in good condition, not excessively worn, it's not bent or broken. And also the steering column here also, straight, not bent or broken, securely attached. We have our shock absorber right here, securely mounted, bushings are in good condition. Mounts at the bottom are securely attached. And we go down to the spring leaf mount. The spring leaf mount is securely mounted to the frame of the bus with nuts and bolts. From the front and the rear right here. Attached to that is the leaf springs. The leaf springs are not broken, not shifted or cracked. Right here is the U-bolt. The U-bolt is attached to the axle of the bus with nuts and bolts. And now we're gonna to go to the inside of the tire. We are going to start with the brake chamber. The brake chamber is not bent. It is securely attached. And going to the brake chamber is the hoses, which I see no leaks, no cuts and no bubbles. Right here is your slack adjuster and push rod. It is securely mounted, attached with the clevis pin and cover key. And to check the ad adjustment in the slack adjuster, you would chalk your wheels, put your bus in neutral, and release your part brake. And by pulling this, you should ha not have no more than one inch play. Going to the inner tire, we have our brake drum, not cracked or broken, in good condition. And we have our brake lining. The brake lining is not excessive wear, no oil of any sort, and in good condition. Next will be our tire. We are looking for ICD, inflation, condition, and in depth. The inflation of the tire must be checked with a commercial air gauge and your valve stem is straight, not bent or broken, has a valve cap, and you would check that with a commercial air gauge like I said. The condition of the tire is evenly worn across, 
not excessively worn. The outside of the tire is in good condition. No cracks, no bubbles, no tears. And also on the inside, no cracks, no bubbles, no tears. And in the depth of this tire, on the front tire, your depth can be no less than 430 seconds. On the outside of the tire, we're gonna check our rim. We're gonna make sure that our rim is not cracked, not bent or broken. No illegal wells on it. It is attached with nuts and bolts and there's no rust. And we also have our um, hub seal cap. It is also securely attached with nuts. Uh, it has a rubber gasket and I see no leaks. And to check this, you would check this by pulling this rubber gasket off and adding oil if needed. We're gonna go over to the other side of the engine now. Okay, our coolant reservoir right here on this side of the engine. Top of the engine is securely mounted with nuts and bolts. Has adequate fluid as you can see. And I see no leaks. The hose is going to the top of the radiator also or in good condition. Securely mounted with clamps and I see no leaks. The hoses are in good condition. The alternator, the alternator is securely mounted. It is also belt driven. Uh, the belt should not have no more than three quarter inch play. And I see in no cuts and no frays on the belt. It is electrical and all the electrical wiring is securely mounted to the back of the alternator. On this side here is the other air conditioner compressor, which is also belt driven on the same belt. Then we're gonna go to the water pump right here. The water pump is securely mounted. I see no water leaks and it also is belt driven. And again, the belt cannot have no more than three quarter inch play. And I'm following the radiator hose down to the bottom of the radiator and I see no leaks. It is securely mounted with clamps. And then we're gonna go to the windshield wiper reservoir. It is securely mounted. I see no leaks. The hoses are in good condition. And the little pump right here also is electrical and is, all the wiring is intact. In good condition. I would then check this side of the tire and the axle, the spring leaf and all that as I did the other side. On the passenger side of the bus, we're gonna check out the side of the bus again. The general appearance is in good condition, not, no damage, no graffiti of any sort. We're gonna start off with the top of the bus. We have our emergency exit decals, our Vermillion Parish School bus decals and our bus number decals. They're all readable, good in condition, securely mounted to the bus. You have your front clearance light, which is amber in color, and you have your rear clearance light, which is red in color. Securely mounted, good in color, and attached to the bus. All our windows are in good condition, not cracked or broken, clean to see through. We have all our reflectors. All our reflector tape is securely mounted as well. Okay. We have our amber reflector here, and in the back we have our red reflector. Okay, now we're gonna go underneath the bus. Okay, looking under the bus, we're looking at the frame right here. The frame is straight, not bent or broken, no illegal holes, and no welds. Our exhaust system is straight, not bent or broken, securely mounted with hangers. I see no excessive soot and no rust. Next is our drive shaft. Our drive shaft also is straight, securely mounted. I see the bushings in the drive shaft are in good condition, not excessively worn. I see no oil leaks. And also the hangers are securely mounted. Okay, looking at the back of the bus, at the top up here, we have our torque arm. Our torque arm is straight, not bent or broken. It is securely mounted. The bushings are, there's not excessive wear. 
I'm going to come down to our brake chambers on both sides, left and right. Not bent or broken, securely mounted. And then we have our leaf spring hangers, securely mounted to the frame of the bus with nuts and bolts, along with our leaf springs. They are not cracked or broken, not shifted, and in good condition. Then looking at our U-bolts right here, they are also securely mounted to the axle of the bus with nuts and bolts. I'm going to move on over to this side over here and look at our slack adjuster on the rear side. Again, our slack adjuster right here. And the push rod, securely mounted with the clevis pin and the cotter key. And again, to check your slack adjuster, you would chalk your wheels, put your bus in neutral, and release your park brake, and you should not have no more than one inch play. Going to the inside of the tire. We are going to look at the brake drum. The brake drum is in good condition, not cracked or broken. I see no oil leaks and your brake lining as well. Not excessive wear, good in condition, and I see no leaks. And move to the outside of the tire, rather than the inside. We're gonna check out spacings between the tire show that there is no debris and again we're looking for ICD inflation condition and depth and on this bus here our two rear tires the inflation you would find your valve stem and you would check it with a commercial air gauge and you have a valve stem on the inside, which is on the top up here, which I can't reach, I can't see, but I can see it, but I can't touch it. And you also have a valve stem on the outer tire. We check that with a commercial air gauge. On your rear tires, your depth has to be a minimum of 230 seconds. Remember, rear tire is 230 seconds, front tire is 430 seconds. As you can see, the tires are evenly worn. No cuts, no bubbles, and no tears. Outside of the tire as well, the condition is in good condition. Here's your valve stem. Like I said, you would check that with a commercial air gauge. It is straight, not bent or broken. And um, the rim, the rim is in good condition. Not broken, not cracked, no illegal wells. All your lug nuts are in good condition, securely mounted, no rust. Your hub seal, your hub seal is securely mounted with nuts and bolts, and I see no oil as well. Then we're going to the mud flap right here. You have one on the left side and the right side. Okay, coming back under the bus on the rear side of the tire, you're going to see our two airbags securely mounted. I see or hear no leaks. We have our fuel tank. The fuel tank is securely mounted and I see no no leaks the existing frame frame is in good condition no illegal holes not bent or broken as well as our exhaust system our exhaust system going to the rear of the bus good condition okay, now we're going to check our door here make sure it is Working condition. As you can see, the handle mechanism works well. We're going to lock, latch the safety chain. And you're going to see, securely mounted with nut, with uh, to the uh, bus with hinges, securely mounted. Our gasket all along the edge of the bus, 
is in good condition, not torn or cracked. And then I'll lift gate, securely mounted to the bus. And now we're gonna go around to the rear side of the bus. We wanna add also the window, but we covered the windows a while ago, but. Okay, starting at the top of the bus, you're gonna see the strobe light, good in color, not cracked or broken and it's surrounded by a cage. We have our three amber lights. I mean, our three uh, clearance lights in the middle, good in color, not cracked or broken, purely mounted. We have our two student lights on the outside, left and right. Our two amber lights, left and right, good in color, not cracked or broken, purely mounted. All our school bus decals, emergency decals, and all that, securely mounted readable our windows again doing clean to see through again we have an exit emergency exit door here as you can see when I open up the door the lights come on again handle mechanism is in good condition securely mounted with hinges and the gaskets alone here are also in good condition no excessive wear not torn or broken You have your left and your right hazard slash signal, your left and your right running lights, brake lights here and here, and your reverse lights, left and right. Good in color, not cracked or broken, securely mounted. We have our license plate light along with our license plate, and we have our two reflectors. Good in condition. Reflector tape is in good condition as well. Our bumper, securely mounted, not bent or broken. Okay, again, looking at the general appearance of the bus, we talked about it earlier, no graffiti, no damage of any sort, in good condition. Windows as well, not cracked or broken, good to see through. All our decals, our reflectors, we have our red and our amber reflectors, good in color, not cracked or broken. Good to see through. We have our stop arm, securely mounted to the bus. Lens covers are in good condition. Good in color, you can see the stop sign. And also our wiring is all electrical here. And it also is in good condition. All wires are attached. And we have our fuel diesel cap here, Phil. This is where we fuel up the bus. You would also make sure, make sure it's securely uh, tightened and locked, okay? Again, I would check this side of the bus as I did the other side. And everything's in good condition. And just a note to let you know, this is where the batteries are and that this is a school bus owned by Vermillion Parish. Next, we'll go around to the inside okay, of the bus. Working our way into the bus, first thing we do is check our entrance door, make sure that it is securely mounted, that our gaskets are in good condition, the glasses are clean, visible to see through, Next is our handrail. Handrail is securely mounted here uh, with nuts and bolts to the frame of the bus and to the seat right here. Our step well. All flooring is down. No trip hazards of any sort. Our stairwell light. Securely mounted, not cracked or broken and in workable condition. We'll start with our ID tag right here. Right here, this indicates the size of the bus this bus is 29,000 pounds which is 14 and a half tons uh, this bus is also 10 foot 8 inches tall uh, we're going to need to know that when you're passing under overpasses or bridges and uh, fire extinguisher securely mounted it has been inspected is up to up to date this is our reflectors we have three reflectors in here uh, triangles uh, is securely mounted as well we have our body fluid kit and our first aid kit. Uh, both have adequate supplies in here. In our first aid kit, we also keep our uh, insurance papers and our registration papers for the bus. And we are school board owned and we do not keep fuses in this bus. Our mechanic shop takes care of that. After doing complete inspection of the outside of the bus and working your way inside of the bus, you will come to your seat. 
You will situate yourself on the seat. Make sure that your feet are flat on the ground. Reach over, grab the seat belt. Make sure that the seat belt is attached well to the wall and to the floor and that it's snapped in correctly. And that the, bu the belt has no cuts, no tears, and no frays. Once I've done that, we want to make sure that our windshield is clean, not cracked or broken, no illegal stickers, and good to see through. Making sure nothing is on your dash for reflection, and also count out your seven mirrors. We have our two left and right crossover mirrors. We have our left flat mirror, our left convex mirror, and on the right side we have our right flat mirror and our right convex mirror along with our student mirror. I will now make sure that my bus is in neutral, my park brake is engaged, I will turn my bus to run, pointing at the dash, noting that my ABS light has come on and gone off, therefore my ABS system is working. I will now apply my foot on the brake and start the bus. And this is a safe start. Now that we've completed a safe start, we will go to the immediate left and we will call out our switches. We have our defrost fan. We have our rear heater. We have our rear dome lights. We have our front dome lights. We have two light indicators, one the red warning lights and one the amber lights. When I activate my amber lights, the light indicator on the inside will light up as well as the outside if you're looking in my crossover mirrors that you can see the amber lights are on. I will now activate my red student lights which will again the red indicator on the inside of the bus is on. My stop signs are out with the light indicators flashing. My overhead red student lights are on. My cross arm is out and my door has opened. I will turn that off. After we've called out our switches, we will go to our steering wheel. First, we want to put our headlights on. We want to make sure that our steering wheel has no more than two inches of play in a 20 inch steering wheel. We want to toot the horn, make sure that the horn works. We will go to our light indicator switch. First of all, we have our windshield wipers. Windshield wipers are working, spraying water on the windshield, which is cleaning it. We will go with our high beam. High beam indicated on the inside that the high beam is on as well as the outside is illuminated. Our left signal illuminated on the inside as well as the outside. We have our right signal light indicator illuminated on the inside as well as the outside. We will go to our emergency lights, hazard lights. Indicator on the inside that both of them are working and illuminated as well as the outside. We'll go to our oil pressure. Our oil pressure is in adequate range. Our water temperature is in an adequate range. Our voltmeter is 13.8 volts working properly. Our fuel gauge is in adequate range which is in full. We have our DEF which is full. We have our, our air pressure primary and secondary gauges both between 120 and 140 psi which is an ideal range. We have our vents blowing on the inside vents and we're going to have our defrost blowing on the dash. It is also blowing air on the dash. From there, we will go into our three-part air brake test. Okay, we will now perform the three-part air brake test. There are three parts to this test. There's the parking brake, a service brake test, and an air leak test. The first one we're going to do is going to be a park brake test. We are going to make sure that our bus is on flat level ground, that our air pressure is between 120 and 140 psi. 
I will apply my foot on the brake. Leaving the park brake engaged, I will put my bus in drive. I will take my foot off the brake and press the accelerator. The bus did not move. Therefore, my parking brake is working. I will apply my foot on the brake, put it back in neutral. Next test is your service brake test. Again, bus is on flat level ground. My air pressure is in adequate range between 120 and 140 PSI. I will now apply my foot on the brake. I will release my park brake, meaning pushing it in. I will put my bus in drive. I will take my foot off the service brake and I will drive the length of a bus or five miles per hour. Gently applying my brake. My bus did not pull to the left or the right. Therefore, my service brake is working. I will put my bus back in neutral, leaving my park brake disengaged. I will turn my bus off, turn it back to run, leaving my foot on the brake. I should not lose no more than three PSI. The examiner will count you off after one minute. After one minute, I did not lose no more than three PSI. I will then start fanning my brake rapidly, pointing at my dash at 60 PSI. My park brake light warning light has come on, indicating that I need to find a safe place to pull over. Again, I will begin fanning my brake rapidly at 40 PSI. My park brake should pop out. And my park brake popped out and my PSI is at 40, which is perfect. And this completes my three part air brake test. I'm gonna walk to the back of the bus. While I'm walking to the back of the bus, I'm gonna check all my seats, front and back, and bottom, make sure they are securely mounted. All our seat belts are intact, good condition, not torn or frayed. And again, we're gonna do our back door as, as first we exit again. We did it from the outside just to show that it worked. Our buzzer came on. We're gonna check our seat belts. Make sure they are securely mounted. This is for our wheelchairs. They all securely mounted to the floor. Our flooring also good condition, no trip hazards of any sort. We're gonna go to our lift gate again on the inside, make sure that it is also securely mounted. Working our way back to the bus, the interior of our bus is in good condition. And we're gonna check our emergency exits. All the decals are in good condition and we'll check one of them to make sure that it works properly. Pops out and it pops back in. And you heard the buzzer come on indicating that the emergency uh, door was open. Okay, again, we're gonna work our way to the front of the bus. We're gonna get back in our seat. We're gonna put our seat belt on. And from here, I will ask the examiner if he, could, he or she could assist me in checking all of my exterior lights, making sure they all work properly. I will have the examiner go outside. I will start from the top, doing all my amber lights, student lights, working my way down. And then I will ask him to go to the back and I'll do everything as well, including the brake and the reverse lights.
Okay, again, uh, this would conclude your pre-trip inspection. Uh, you need to remember that you need to know the bus that you are driving. You need to inspect your bus properly because you're responsible for that trip. And also, if you complete all this properly, you'll become a safe driver. And remember, you're transporting precious cargo. So I wish you good luck and safe driving. Thank you.